Who is the earliest ancestor of modern elephants? Why do elephants have such a big trunk? And why is the elephant so huge? Right now we will open the secret door of the evolution of a familiar animal to all of us. Here is a story about real ancient giants, proboscis mammals. Their journey began after the Great Cretaceous Paleogene extinction, which sent dinosaurs into oblivion and freed up a bunch of ecological niches. The first animal, from which the proboscis count begins, lived about 60 million years ago in the territory of modern Morocco. His name was Proud Eritherium, which translated from Greek means old animal. Just imagine, this Eritherium is walking through the ancient lands, so important and majestic, like a real ancient patriarch. He was a pioneer who paved the way for all future elephants and their relatives. This ancient giant did not have such a long trunk as modern elephants, but its descendants developed this feature, turning into the majestic animals we know today. For such achievements in evolution, it is not a sin to shake Eritrea's trunk, which he had. Listen to the story of the smallest and most primitive known relative of the elephant, our dear Eritherium. This little guy weighed no more than 11 pounds. A true dwarf among giants. In terms of the structure of its teeth, Eritherium still resembled its relatives, the early manatees. Imagine such small teeth but with character. However, the incisors have already developed specific characteristics. No, there were no tusks here yet, but the beginnings were already visible, like those of a young hero who was just preparing for his great exploits. Eretirius was like a real first grader among future professors. Small but ambitious. And although he could not boast of impressive size, he laid the foundations for his future giant relatives, Phosphoteria appeared. This baby was the largest mammal in Africa at the time it weighed as much as 33 pounds and was 23 inches long. Not quite a giant yet, but no longer a dwarf. These little Phosphoteria were true pioneers, preparing the way for future giants. These little animals never produced any rapid evolutionary miracles. They just evolved slowly and silently. Having passed through inconspicuous side branches of development, the history of the origin of elephants stopped at the following vivid representation, the remains of elephant ancestors. It was Meritiria. This handsome man lived 36 to 30 million years ago and was a real giant by the standards of that time. He was not particularly tall, only five feet. Well, like an average teenager but it was already 10 feet long and weighed up to 550 pounds. Imagine such a pot-bellied giant who walks through ancient lands with pride and importance. Meritirium was a real tank of its time. He looked like a sumo fighter among other animals. Although not very tall, it is long and powerful. He had strong legs, and he easily made his way through dense thickets and swamps. Meritirium became a kind of bridge between the ancient hippopotamus-like forms and the future giants. Meritirium is interesting to us because his lifestyle was similar to hippopotamuses and not to elephants. This guy loved water and seaweed more than walking on the savanna. Many consider it the direct ancestor of elephants, but still it was more of a hippopotamus than an elephant. He felt like a real ancient hippopotamus, only with ambitions and dreams for the future. Meritherium swam in ponds, chewed algae, and looked at the world from a height of five feet. At the same time, guys like Phyomia and Paleomastodons lived with Meritiria. They are more suitable for the role of the elephant's ancestors. Phyomia and Paleomastodons were true revolutionaries of their time. They prepared the way for the appearance of our majestic elephants. And Meritirium remained faithful to his aquatic life, enjoying every moment among the algae. Let's talk about Paleomastodon. This guy lived about 30 million years ago and was the direct ancestor of our modern elephants. A Paleomastodon is like the granddaddy of all elephants, only at a younger age. 
This handsome fellow was approximately 7 feet tall at the shoulders and weighed several tons. Wow, what dimensions he had! And what's most interesting is that he already had the beginnings of those famous tusks that we see on modern elephants. Such fashionable accessories from ancient times. The Paleomastodon lived in dense forests and plains, and was a real gourmet. He loved to eat a variety of vegetation. This giant knew how to use its long tusks and trunk to get to the most delicious greens and fruits. And although he looked impressive, the Paleomastodon was quite peaceful. He loved spending time with his family and traveling through ancient lands in search of food. This giant was a real family man for his relatives, who all stuck together and supported each other. Here's another funny story about evolution that, depending on the mood, could play a joke on animals. Imagine, over the course of 15 million years, whales went from a semi-aquatic artiodactyl to a full-fledged whale, Basilosaurus. This is simply fantastic. Meanwhile, elephants have grown slightly over 32 million years, but they lengthened the nose and still did not gain full-fledged tusks. Evolution was clearly slowing down something with them. A picture immediately appears before your eyes of how evolution sits and sculpts an elephant, but nothing good comes of it. The elephant did not want to mold himself. And then Platybelodon appears, which is not that strange for the order of Proboscideans, but in principle looks like a fictional animal. Imagine, he has such a funny flat trunk and huge lower incisors, as if nature was not in the mood and decided to conduct a sad experiment. One gets the feeling that natural selection did not understand at all which direction and whom to select. Such natural selection sits and thinks, okay, let it be Platybelodon, at least we'll have some fun. Yes, this beast didn't even seem strange, but downright awkward. Nature was clearly in a hurry for more important matters when she created this creature. But with all this, this character managed to pull out roots and strip bark from trees, as if it were his daily fitness. But, as they say, nothing lasts forever under the sun. The extinction of Platybelodon is associated with the drying out of their habitats due to climate change. These merry creatures disappeared en masse in Asia, North America and Africa about 4 million years ago. Their last relatives lived until 1.5 million years ago in Europe, but did not survive the coming ice age. The last thoughts of the Platybelodon, who was trying to warm up, were something like this. Well, they could have warned that winter is coming. And Belodons, which were very closely related to the extinct Platybelodons, did not last long by evolutionary standards. Only three million years. They were similar in body to their ancestor, and the head and trunk bore some resemblance to the modern elephant. Dianotherium or Dinotherium A real giant of ancient times, Dianotherium. These guys were up to 13 feet tall and weighed over 13 tons. Such elephant weightlifters, ready for any weightlifting championship. The skeleton of Dianotherium was found, by the way, in Russia, in the Azov Museum of Local Lore. You definitely need to see such a colossus. Will be remembered for a lifetime. Now, why Dianotheriums have such tusks is still a debatable question. Some paleontologists believe that these giants used them to strip the bark from trees. Other scientists think that Dianotherium ate leaves and the tusks were the result of sexual selection. Apparently these guys had their own elephant miss and Mr. Beauty pageants, where the big tusks were like a crown. The latest representatives of these giants lived in Kenya about one million years ago. Dianotherium walked around the savanna and spoke. Eh, the climate is changing, it's time to go south, but we're further south. Mastodons are also worth noting. These guys were like prehistoric tanks, only with a trunk and tusks. They lived all over the earth, and each of them was Tom with a two-story house and weighed several tons. Ah, what beauties! Mastodons were real gourmets. They loved variety in food, 
just as we love kinkali and shish kebab. These ancient Gurmis ate leaves, branches, bark and even grass. In the dense forest, any mastodon was met with a real buffet. And their tusks, what a sight it was! Some paleontologists believe they used them like forks and knives to get the best morsels of food. Others think that these tusks were a tool for digging up roots and even for protection. A mastodon digging the ground with its huge tusks is no joke, it's a real excavator of antiquity. But the funniest moments, brothers, come when you imagine how they communicated with each other. Mastodons were social animals, living in herds and probably chatting about their mastodon business. We can imagine how they gather near a pond in the evening, discussing who found the most delicious leaves where, and who dug up the juiciest root. Unfortunately, these ancient giants died out about 10,000 years ago, but left us many mysteries and interesting stories. It is necessary to tell about an Ancus. Anankis was not a real elephant. This animal lived 2 million years ago in Eurasia and the African continent. This Gomphotherium reached a height of up to 11 feet at the withers. The Gomphotherium lineage with modern elephants diverged about 30 million years ago. This is the crown of the evolutionary line of the Gomphotherium family. In Gomphotheriums, the skull and lower jaw were shortened and the trunk and upper tusks were lengthened. These animals fed on lush vegetation in coastal forests and swampy lowlands. Another experiment of nature, Primeliface. This ancient giant lived about 7 million years ago and was the real star of the evolutionary show. Imagine, Primeliface was like a test sample for future elephants, a kind of prototype. He was impressive in height and didn't let down his weight either. He walked across Eurasia and Africa, like a real king of the jungle and savannas. This beast was a real bridge between ancient mastodons and our modern elephants. At one time, Primelophus really stood at the crossroads of evolution and thought, well, where to go next? In which direction to develop, he already had the beginnings of those famous tusks but still not as impressive as those of his descendants. It was a kind of test drive of evolution. This hero loved lush vegetation and could walk for hours through forests and swamps, enjoying his green diet. Primelophus was a true evolutionary experiment where nature tried different options to find the perfect elephant formula. And although it looked a little strange, this ancient elephant left a very noticeable mark on history. Well, here we are into the closest ancestors of the modern elephant. Mammoths. These guys were the real masters of the Ice Age. They were large, fluffy, and with huge tusks, as if nature had decided to make them even more impressive. A mammoth is like an elephant on steroids only with a fancy wool coat to keep you warm in harsh conditions. These giants could weigh up to 10 tons and reach a height of 13 feet. True heavyweights of the ancient world. But their tusks are a completely different story. Long, twisted, like huge Japanese katanas. Mammoths used them as multifunctional tools, clearing snow, getting food, and even scratching themselves when no one was looking. Mammoths were real gourmets. They were experts at extracting food from under the snow and ice, using their powerful tusks and trunks. These furry giants lived in herds, and they probably had their own family traditions and customs. Unfortunately, about 10,000 years ago, mammoths became extinct, leaving us with many mysteries and amazing stories. Today there are two main species of elephants, this is an Indian elephant and an African elephant. By the way, the African elephant is much larger than the Indian one. Both species live in hot climates. They live in herds and are constantly on the road. They migrate from one territory to another and then return. Do you like the video? 
give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to press the bell so you don't miss new and interesting videos from the Real Unreal channel.